And we've been taught to if we build it, we need to own it. I was hired to do a show called The Breakfast Club. That was a local show in New York Here City. We, go. we built it into a nationally syndicated program. That's when you start having the equity conversations to make sure that not only am I getting treated correctly, I can treat everybody around me correctly. Because I know what I want yes. and I know what I want my people to have. Yes. Now let's make sure that they got it. Kanye called me to get me to talk to Pete to tell Pete to leave Kim alone. Like, bro, we, you need to take this back to the 1900s. I'm loyal to the soil yeah. when it comes to my friends. Sure. I didn't Yo. even want to give Kanye my number. When Joe Budden first started, he came and got you. For him to take the kind of shots that he took, he went in on me. And I was like, oh. Where did it go wrong with you guys? Niggas don't read. Right, right. <laughs> if you respected the value of books, you would understand why wow, that's a big deal. Yes. For a man from South Carolina, a place where slaves used to get imprisoned, for him to have a book imprint where he's able to have these black people come and tell their stories, that's a big deal. The first talk show I've ever had canceled was Hell of a Week. The first one. That's the first one yeah, I've ever been yeah, canceled. So Uncommon Sense was on for three seasons because MTV2 stopped doing original programming, period. Industry change. Well, this is another thing I want to tell the youngsters. You know, there was a point in my life where I thought about wanting to own a bunch of radio stations, but then it's 2023. Yo, we got all of these podcasts hosted by all of this black talent out here, but they don't necessarily know how to translate that viewership into dollars. So it's like, oh, I know what I want my next play to be. What'll happen is we'll get the money we've always dreamed of and then buy things that we don't need, buy things that we won't even utilize. I love this conversation because I'm talking about things I never talked about before. You know that's that was a, a that's a great question, but it's it's kind of like I don't want to say insulting. Not 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 you. I know you're not yeah, trying nah, to insult sure, me. Nah. But it's like, yo, man, I I came up that way. I came up because a OG legendary radio personality, Wendy Williams, said, mm. "Yo, come here." The one thing I always say I feel bad about uh, with Wendy is that, you know. We had, it wasn't necessarily her, you know, but you know, her, her ex-husband, we had friction. So that relationship didn't end the right way. But imagine if, imagine if she, imagine if that plane had landed with the wheels out. Like imagine if Wendy was Wendy, right? Man. And she had this young protege named Charlemagne uh. from South Carolina that she put her arm around, and then that person became who he is. Who he is. Yes. Yo, there's nothing flyer than that. Man, that's the most flyer like, 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 in the like, world. Like, forget, what you, you can grow a tree, but the illest thing is to have mad fruit from that tree. More importantly, forget the fruit. I, I, don't, I want everybody else to have their own kingdom. Right. You know what I mean? So I want right. to put you in position to be able to have your own right, kingdom. Right. Like that's, there's nothing more powerful than that yeah. to me. That's why I've always utilized my platforms to help those next people, even those people folks can't even see coming. Right. I remember when I used to do Uncommon Sense and you know, one day we're gonna have to do a documentary on not just Uncommon Sense, but that whole MTV2 yeah, we, let's get into that too. movement, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, let, 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 matter of fact, yeah, we can't get into yeah. it. Let's start with like Guy Code, right? We started doing Guy Code back in the day. Think about all the people that came from Guy Code. Myself, Lil Duval, Andrew Schultz, uh, Pete Davidson, you know, um, Carly Aquilino, then they they spun off and turned into Girl Code. So you had Nicole Byer and Aquafina and Nessa and J you know Jesse May Peluso, all of these people that's doing their thing. Chris Stefano, you know what I mean? Yes. And so it's like that one. Chris is hard. I like oh, him. Dope. A com Chris Bendo. A comic. He's hard. Chris Bendo. Yeah. Shout and out that, Chris. That one show blew up so much on MTV too that all of us got shows. Duvall had a show called Ain't That America. Schultz had a couple shows on MTV. One was called uh, Jobs That Don't Suck. Another one, he was hosting a game show. You know, uh, I had my first my first talk show, which evolved into Uncommon Sense. It was called Charlemagne and Friends. We did a, a six-episode run. We didn't even have a real name for it. We did a right. little six-episode run called Charlemagne and Friends, and that turned to Uncommon Sense. But go back and watch that show, right? Go back and watch Charlemagne and Friends. Why? Because every week I would have three people on. You know what I mean? First episode, it was Ice Cube. You were trying people... You and then which was that the same one you was just trying Twitter people? No, that was the second. That was okay, the, that was okay, the evolution. Okay, that was when, okay, cause, okay. Because Charlamagne and Friends, the first episode was Ice Cube, Kevin Hart, and Tika Sumter. Because Ride Along was out, okay, and okay. I had like a real small yes, part in Ride yes, Along. Yes. But every week I would have my actual people on that show. People that 
weren't who they are now, the Pete Davidsons, you know what, what I mean? A, a, Alicia Renee, who yes. y'all about to hear a lot more from in the future. Like all these, like Tanisha Long, these people that, you know, evolved and did grow into these people that you see now, right? And then um, Charlamagne and Friends turned to Uncommon Sense. Uncommon Sense was the one, man. Now what was MTV at in this time? Like I'm saying, for MTV as a was a whole wise. other network. So MTV Two was the small network that my man Chris McCarthy used to run. Salute to Chris McCarthy. He's the the big dog over at Paramount now. But Chris McCarthy, Paul Ritchie, uh, Candida Clemens was over there. Um, my girl Tiffany Williams. She was at MTV, but she's the one who bought us into the system to begin with. But and MTV, that's what you need too, somebody to bring you into the system. That's right. MTV Two didn't have no original programming. Guy Code was. Okay, like, that's what fact, I wanted to know. Matter of fact, Guy Code was the second original programming that they ever had. I think the first was MTV Sucker Free that okay. Envy used to host. Okay. And then I started hosting Now, did they, did they well. have proper funding and all of that at that time? Like, what what, the, uh, what did MTV 2 look like? Oh, was man. We was getting paid pennies back then. That's I remember I remember when when they came to me in 2012, 2013 and asked me to do to do an overall deal, which is a television deal with them. I, I was getting paid 55 grand a year. Cause, wow. cause in my mind, I was like, "What? What they want me to do TV for? I'm yeah. the radio guy, right? Right? You know?" Right. And they just didn't an even extra fifty five. And, yeah. and, and by the way, they didn't even know what it is they wanted me to do. They just wanted me to sign to the network as a talent, which I did. And Guy Code ended up being the first show. And if you go back and you watch Guy Code now, the biggest person on Guy Code at that time was Donnell Rollins. Mm, now look, like he was the one with the name. Yeah, like now look, like we don't, we didn't. They, you, you were certain. The amount of people might have known me yeah, and Duval yeah, 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 and all of them, yeah, yeah. but you didn't know Donnell and Andrew and Nicole Bayer and all of those got people like that. I don't know if Nicole, I think Nicole was on Girl Code, not Guy Code. Yeah. But then Charlemagne and Friends evolves into Uncommon Sense. Man, if you go look at the people we had on Uncommon Sense, I'm Looney, saying. I used to have Jesus and Mero on every episode. Jesus and Mero never did TV before. They went and warranted a big deal. They, they, they After that. I, I, my, my dream was to have Uncommon Sense on at 11, Jesus and Mero on at 11.30 on MTV two but you know they couldn't see the vision for whatever reason so that would have mtv2 couldn't see the vision so the, those brothers went and they got their deal at vice but think about that we did three seasons of un, well yeah four seasons of uncommon sense because if you count Charlemagne and friends and then the three years that we did uncommon sense from like i think it was either 2015 to 2018 or maybe 2014 to 2017 i don't remember but we did three seasons of that show these zamero was on every episode um chico bean DC Young Fly, that shit Carlos is a hit Miller. Now, right now, that's an expensive <laughs> show. Carlos Miller, Cardi B was a guest on the show. I think right before she started doing Love and Hip Hop, Taxstone used to be on that show. My man Kaz, you know, who's 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 big in the sports world right now, is on that show. We used to have Nori on that show. You know what I mean? Before there was a Drink Champs, you know. Like Button was on that show before there was a a, 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 a yeah, Joe Button podcast. Yeah. That was the show where I literally took all of these dudes from Twitter, all of these women from Twitter, and was having all of these auditions because I wanted to bring black Twitter to television. They just didn't have what it took back then. And you saw that, though. But the, the, the idea that you even saw that, there's a connection here. There's something here, right? Yep. And they couldn't see the division. That's that's weird. But they've always been late to the party. Yeah. Was it my girl they Vashti? Couldn't... Vashti was the DJ on that show. My girl Cuppy, who's a big DJ in South Africa, she was on that show. Just like, think about how expensive that show would be now. <laughs> I know you. Charlemagne, <laughs> Zuri Hall. Well, how expensive? What? What? what just put a oh, number on. Crazy. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 Word up. Executives, they'd be like, I don't, you know, I, don't, hey, I don't understand them. I don't understand that slang. I'm like, yo, 66% of all black people are in the South. Mm. Y'all may not understand them, but a but lot of black people but, do. But, bro, you don't even and, understand. And, and, and that was before social, that was before, like, people even understood social media influences. And, yeah. They didn't and believe how they in them. That's yes, right. They didn't, yes. they didn't believe yes, in them back yes, then. Yes, yes, yes. Cardi right. B was one of the plies. It was certain people... Social media start revising their career. I'm like, oh shit! Man, I told Blast come back from social media. I was, I was telling everybody Cardi B was gonna be a star. People was tripping. I remember like, that. Was like, like, why he get a plaque for Bodak Yellow? Yeah, because Cardi, her, one of her first interviews was here on Breakfast Club. Yeah. You know what I mean? People thought I was trolling when I was in here playing cheap ass weave. Yeah, you know what you I mean? Were serious. That was her song. Yeah. I'm like, yo, this girl. They, they even actually said that Charlotte might be getting paid. He was riding. They were saying I was getting yeah. paid. From Cardi. Yeah. I ain't never got a check from Cardi. Nah, I remember I that. Just, I just fuck with Cardi. So to go back to your point about, you know, uh, would I be afraid somebody gonna be bigger than me? Right. That's the whole point. 
<laughs> and then like you said, the I'm just doing what was done for me. That's it. Because I see that that's the way I got to the next level. Because without that, I might would have crashed out. What's going on? I go by Big Loom. All of my interviews with your favorite people in the world on Patreon.com and some their podcasts, as well as the show with only me while I speak directly to the culture. Plenty more perks. I'll see you there. I might wouldn't have had no real roadmap and that's what i need for us to understand that bro we are leaving the roadmap we're in a uh, it's like being in an undeveloped city that's right podcasting is like it's undeveloped charlemagne been out here for 25 years though when when i get here i need to hook up with somebody that either done hooked up with charlemagne or hooked up with somebody that's already been here but i don't i don't i don't even want people to just focus on podcasting and that's that's like one of the big things i keep trying to stress like i'm a multi media entrepreneur, yes. you know what I mean? Yes. I don't like, the, people like to say mogul, I, 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 let, I let other people say that, yeah. but I'm a, I'm a multimedia. They put you mogul down on one of them things too. That's what they, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like they say that, they, when they put me on these lists, or when they, they introduce me, that's what they say, right? What constitute a mogul though? Look what all you've done, they, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Getting back, and let's, let's remember this, uh, uh, cause I wanna speak on that because at some point, you ha this is the problem I think we're dealing with too, is that Charlemagne is the guy who's actually got the stats and the numbers and the, the shit to back up what he's saying, but he's in this space where, you know, I won't pr I'm not proclaiming it. And these other guys may not have the numbers, but they're proclaiming it. Like, hey, I know what to do. Hey, I'm the person that tells the culture Hey, don't anyone take that kind of deal. That deal is bad. Or don't go this way with your shit. That's right. And it's like, yo, but have you even done it that way? Well, it's, it's up to it's up to people to pay attention. Like you, Lou, and you look under the hood of cars. Oh yes. You know what oh, I mean? Yes. So so if people just want to look at the nice paint job on the car and be like, yo, that's what I want to drive, jump in it. Yeah. You want, you, want, you you gonna go a few miles and realize this engine bad as a yeah. motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I don't. I, the people I follow, man, like the people that I look to. In entertainment, I got four entertainment role models. Arsenio Hall, because what he did with that late night talk Killed show it. was was legendary. Do you want to do that? That you you ultimately want to you want to want to be? Um, well, I tell you this, and this is another misconception that they say online, right? They lo they love to say, and that's where we are with the shows and shit. So we we, we can yeah, talk about. They it. love to say Charlemagne uh, has failed TV shows. I've had I've had great success in television, and I've had moderate success in television. The great success came from the guy codes and all of that stuff like that, right? That guy, that guy code did like five or six seasons and, and spawned off so many different spinoff shows. You heard all the shows that I, yes, I named before, yes. not just for me, but for other, other people. people. And then with the talk show, the first talk show I've ever had canceled was Hell of a Week, which just got canceled. The first one. No, this one that just happened on well, Comedy I'm saying Central. that's the first one that's ever. That's the first one that's yeah, ever been yeah, canceled. So that's a misconception. That's a big misconception because yes. Uncommon Sense was on for three seasons, like three years. The only reason Uncommon Sense stopped because MTV2 stopped doing original programming, period. Industry change. It was like there was no more original programming on MTV2. It's the same reason you don't see no guy code or any of that stuff like that. I think I might have been the last show what makes mtv what, what makes someone like comedy central make that decision to to go that other way and say yo we're kind of getting out of original program and we're going that other way did they converse that because i well, this is another thing i want to tell the youngsters negotiation is so important because mm -hmm. although you didn't film that third season you still were paid we were supposed to come back for a third season but the business changes trevor noah left the daily show I mean, so when Trevor Noah leaves, that was our lead in. That's Comedy Central's lead bread in. And Explain lead in for them too. Well, they, he's come on at eleven o'clock. So you know what they hope with a lead in is you got a great lead in, and you're able to maintain at least fifty to sixty percent of those ratings. You know what I'm saying? Some weeks we did that, some weeks we didn't. But when Trevor Noah left unexpectedly, now Comedy Central's like, damn, what, yeah. what, 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 you know, like yeah. cause that's 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 the guaranteed. That's the guy. That's the guaranteed number. Yeah. Guaranteed yeah. ad revenue. Then you get a writer strike that happens. You know what I mean? When a writer strike happens, man, and you a show, and you know you're not on air, and you're not like uh, established like a lot of the other talk shows. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna move in another direction. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. just part of the business. And that's industry change. And I think again, the same way we see that industry change. With that, this is what we speak to when we talk about YouTube is that there can be an industry change in which they just say, you know what? If you've been using the N word in your videos, you're done. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah. Now, 
all of you guys that got this big catalog on YouTube of videos, you're done. Now it creates a job. Not only does it decrease your income, now you got to send somebody in to edit. So now it becomes an expense an because expense. of the industry change. <laughs> Absolutely. But when you negotiate in a way that you did, even though the industry change, they still have to make sure that I'm paid. How did you... Is that is that just your team being at a? That's my that's my team, but it's also um, just having 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 good cachet. relationships. You know what I mean? Having good relationships, but also it's sometimes things which, what's in the contract still got to be on it. Like mm -hmm. you know, that's like that's why you got to be very careful of you know when you say certain things in emails or when certain things are said because that has to be honored. Like people don't realize you can be going back and forth in emails, and you know. If if I need to uh, make if sure you, you uphold, in court, if, yes. I, if I need to make sure you uphold what you know, uh, if you I, if I need to make sure you do what you said you're going to do, I could say I got this email chain. That shit is that shit is binding, it's especially binding if all court. the deal points and yeah, everything yeah, is yeah. in there. And then, like you say, that communication back and forth is definitely binding in court. Yeah, and, and the other thing too, um, I'm, I'm 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 in a great space with Paramount, and have been for the past. 11, 12 years. And so that that <laughs> even speaks to the cancellation wasn't one of there's no more value in Charlemagne. And that's how your enemies are painted. Of course. They, they paint it like, yo, of that course. late night show is like, it's no value in Charlemagne on the late night market. But you got these companies saying, hey, our relationship with Charlemagne is still in good standing. And that's, and that's all you want. At the end of the day, like I said, I've had great success in television and I've had moderate success in television, not just being in front of the camera, but producing shows as well. Same thing with, you know, producing films, because once again, it's what people got to understand. It's just another one of my lanes. Exactly. And you asked me a question earlier. You said, is late night something I wanted to do? The reason I hesitated on that is because I said that before. And I, when I said that before, uh, I remember Arsenio Hall was doing an interview when his stand-up special was out and they asked Arsenio Hall, they said, yo, who is who would be considered like the you of this generation? And he said, Charlemagne. Mm. This was a few years ago. And I remember hearing that and I'm like, oh, shoot. And then he was talking about, you know, he don't have a TV show, but he has a radio show and right. the radio show is distributed through a podcast and YouTube. And I'm like, oh, if the guy who I look to as one of my influences, Season in me. by the way, it's Arsenio, Jay-Z, uh, Petey Green and Clarence Avon, those are my four. I said, if the guy, that I look to is saying that, then I'm I'm good. But then it comes Comedy Central. Hey, hey man, we want you to do a talk show. I'm supposed to say no? Of course not. <laughs> like, <laughs> of course not. And I'm gonna say yes yeah. when, the, when the next person course, comes, you know course, what I mean? Of course, of course. So, I mean, I, do, do does it affect you what happens over there? If it's extremely successful, does it add, or if it's extremely not successful, does it take away from from your stature or how you feel about doing no. late night? The biggest, the biggest thing that always bothers me when situations like that happen is uh, not being able to employ all those people. You know, that's what I, mean? I respected so much because I know you, you know, you good, but you would, everybody else was even paid. It's like, yo, that's a boss, that's a player move. I don't even know how you found that out. Yeah, you know? I know. I'm on top of it. You know, I mean? you know I'm but on top you, of it. But since you asked, yeah, you I'm know? on top. You know, I watch the game, bro. Like yeah. I'm on top of it. Like, like you say, I look under the hood. I know where to find the information. I know where to go. I know how to get to it. And that's what I hope to to show these youngsters that there's a formula to get to the true information and where the true value lies. Yeah, for for me, the biggest thing is always, you know, when when um. You know, you see all of those people lose their jobs because, once again, to go back to what I love to do, throwing assists, right? The showrunner for my late night talk show the last two seasons is my good sister, Rachel, Rachel Edwards. And me and Rachel, super tight. I met Shout Rachel, Rachel. I, I met Rachel when she was an assistant for uh, Candida, who was an executive at, at Paramount. This was 12 years ago. And you just throw these executive names around. These little niggas don't know what you're saying, but these are... <laughs> <laughs> These are people who, who cut chicks, like but, get shit but, done. But Rachel was an assistant, and I've just watched Rachel grow over the years. Rachel worked on Uncommon Sense. I don't even remember what her position was over there, but she worked on Uncommon Sense on my other talk show. My homegirl, Bianca. Bianca was with me um, when I did the first iteration of Uncommon Sense, which was Charlemagne and Friends. And she worked with me all through Uncommon Sense. So when I had the opportunity 
to have my own show and not just have my own show, no more importantly, hire my staff. Exactly. Those are the first two people I went. Oh, Rachel, you ain't never been a showrunner. Now you a showrunner. Put that um, on your resume. Yeah, Big Boy Comedy Central on that. That's right. Bianca. I, I, I can't remember what position Bianca had, but it was a position she never had before. My man Charles McBee. Charles used to write for me on um, Uncommon Sense. He became my head writer on uh, Hell of a Week. Right. You know what I mean? So it's right. just like all of these people that I came up with in Bring this it. business. Yeah, now I saying. have an opportunity to empower them in ways that they've never been Dope. empowered. So for me, that's the biggest thing always, like, you know, when those situations fall through, yeah. it's like, damn, you know, I, I think about Everybody. all of them. And I, and, I, and I believe that. Why would you say you never wore your wealth? Why why did you bite into that, being a part of hip hop? Yeah. Like literally when my dad pointed. But damn, hip hop still, a lot of these niggas daddy tell them they hear it all the time and hip hop still kind of. That ain't me. Plus I come from a, you know, I, when you come from yeah. where I come from, Monk's Corner, South Carolina, raised on the dirt road, that's just not, not saying that people ain't flossy and flashy. Yeah. That's just not how I move. Cause I'm always thinking about those yeah. people. And I don't, yeah. I don't never want to seem. Yo, my mama, my mama always says that boy Charlemagne, he, do not try to wear his wealth. I like him, That's and not I my think thing. she's talking to me through you, right? You know, <laughs> you know how they try to slickly, you know what I'm saying? Like you try to slickly be like, "Yo," because you know, tighten up a little bit. Like you see, like, and I got, know, I mean, I got tasteful things. Like I got a couple watches, of course, of course. You know, yeah. and, I, and like even when I wear jewelry, it's like I wear my anchor to keep me grounded. Yeah, I got a see shit like that. It's meaning, it's purpose. It's, it's, it's right. I got, yeah. the, I got the honorable Elijah Muhammad. I got. Malcolm X, little small pieces. That's what I'm I got, saying. you know, Duval gave me a rich broke chain. You know what I mean? I got Nipsey, you know, uh, God bless the dead. I got uh, like my homegirl Jazz, God bless the dead. I got her on a ring, like stuff that means something to me. And the crazy part is, I don't even wear it. Like I got Jazz on a ring and I don't even wear it. That's you what know? I'm saying, but man. I just like looking at it. Right, you know what I mean? right, right. And it's meaningful and purposeful, man. That shit is dope. And I need to, because. What'll happen is we'll get the money we've always dreamed of and then buy things that we don't need, buy things that we won't even utilize. That's right. You know what I mean? You Money is a tool, and I think you've been someone to, to kind of show us that. Um, and, and I, I, want, I, I, love, I, love, I love this conversation because I'm talking about things I never talked about before, but it's just that, that, that misconception about television is hilarious to me because yeah. it's like it's, it's things that I'm credited on that people may not even know I'm credited like on. Like what? Um, I mean, a lot of different. Like, I, I, I'm, the first thing that comes to my mind is Body. This movie I was a consultant producer on. I seen that that, that Eminem executive yeah. produced. But that was a battle rap, was it? Yeah, yeah. But yep. but but what what people really need to understand is like like this say like this play me and Kevin Hart doing with Audible called SBH, right? SBH stands for Short Black and Handsome Productions. You know, our first shout out Kevin Hart too. That's that's man monumental hustle. And people. If, if you're not, if you looking at, if you're still looking at Kevin as a comedian, then you missing the yeah, whole. Yeah, you done point. missed the bus. You were and up. it's gone. That's that's a mold. Yes, like in a real way. Yes. And um, our first two projects was Finding Tamika, that the good sister Erica Alexander created along with Color Farm Media, and some of '85 that my guy Chris Moreau Shout created. Chris. You know, um, all we're doing is creating an IP that is eventually going to be television, film. Right documentaries, right. we're doing it through the audio world because you know, why sit around and try to convince people, right. you know, that, you know. Build it up. Why, why convince you that this is a great idea? Well, we can just Show do you. it over here at Audible. Yeah. Like we got a project coming out this summer that I can't wait to talk about. Um, I can't speak about it now, but yeah. it's our first, it'll be our first scripted um, series with Audible. Dope. So it'll be like listening Dope. To a TV show, yes. and I can't wait to announce what we even doing that that with, because you know I'm taking that one really, really, really personal yeah. because it's gonna be a passion project for me, just because I know what this person has been through. Right, you know That's I know this, I know this person struggle and hustle for yeah. real, but all of those things are set up to be, you know, uh, like I said, television, yeah, films, yeah, yeah. documentaries, and, and, with, and with your relationship still in good standing, it's a it's a alley oop. It's easy, especially with then Kevin. And let me tell you about that. Just just some business for people. Kevin has a company, Heartbeat Productions. Heartbeats. They way, got deals way, all over the place. Way farther along yeah. than See the God World is. You think I'm going to argue about being in on a TV play if I'm not getting 50%? Oh, yeah. This equity <laughs> shit is getting <laughs> you know on my nerves. Like, yeah. like, 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 like with something like SBH, that's 50 50. Yes. We audio your world, yes. right? But when we go into his world, with his going, leverage, what? his market share is. 
Loon, why would I trip? Yeah, man. Why would I ever trip? This You're man feeding is, your this, ego. This, feeding your ears, man, is way farther along than I am in that space. That's his world. Yes. Show me the way, my brother. Humbly. Show me the way. Yeah. Humbly. I'm, I, I love talking to Kevin. Man, and every time he talks, like, even I can tell, like, I was looking at, because, again, I watch everything. Every you don't, I don't miss nobody because, again, I got to know what warrants the money and why it warrants the money. I'm always looking for the why. Right, everybody can get on the mic and talk and this and that, but why is Kevin making so much and why is Charlotte making so much? What's going on? I, I, why is this me making so much? Oh, I don't stop know it! Where, this is stop it. where are you getting stop this from? it? I'm just stop happy to be it. making a living. You don't make all those high priority lists and not be making that kind of paper. <laughs> I'm not I, trying to I hear. I think it. it's about what I put into the world. It is. It's a you combination know? of things. Yeah, I think it's about what the I money. Put into is, the, world. the money's there too, and, and I want to know why. Is it is it that you feel like it'll come back on you or you feel like it's bad energy or it's negative or it's the energy of like boasting? I just don't see the need. Like that's not but what, what I'm But what about for. when your counterparts take shots at you? I could care less. Like for what? Like it's like like why would I Listen, I'm I'm fully aware that nobody cares about the truth when the lie is more entertaining. But one thing I do know about lies, they can't do anything to you. Nah. Like, say, you can say whatever you want. You can spin whatever narrative you want. That don't change my reality. The lie got speed. The truth got endurance. That's it. That don't change my reality. And to that point, you know, when you say the truth got endurance, man, Nasir Jones said a line that's so cold. Nasir Jones said, uh, much success to you, even if you wish me the opposite. Because sooner or later, we all going to see who the prophet Ooh. is. <laughs> and that's, that's and, dope, and that's just, and that's, that's the truth. That's just because how I move. time is undefeated. I could, I, I've, I've, I've seen them come, I've seen them go. When, you know? when, because I remember when. Now, first, I'll get into Pete Davidson. You and Pete have a very close relationship. Where did that come from? Guy code. Mm. Is that Pete, where you met Pete? That's where I met him. Okay. Pete was young. Pete was like sixteen. And he literally would follow. And he's a comic. I, he's right. a comic. Yes. He, he would follow. I didn't even know he was that young because he's always been so tall. Right. And the way he's always hand, carried himself, just like, just a, a very mature young man. And like, you know, he would always tell us the story about his father perishing in 9-11, God bless the dead. God and bless. Like me, we, me and Duvall would go out to eat after tapings and he would just come with us. And he was just one of those Dope. people who always, we, we talk on the phone, we started kicking it. Like, I don't know. We just like, yeah. that's my that's my guy. That's you know what I mean? Up. Like that's he always up. wanted advice. And, yeah. You know, I know his mom, I know his uh, sister, yeah, yeah, you know, dope. like I, he, he's been, he comes to my house, I've been to his house, like, uh, just, yeah. I can't, like you don't know how you develop a relationship. Right, right, Same right. thing with Duval M, I don't yeah, know how I yeah, develop yeah, the relationship. Yeah, it just happens. And, and and what's so cool about that now, is like I love when people say things like, you know, oh man, Charlemagne done gone industry, because that's, that's what I used to always say, you either of the industry or you of the people. What I would tell all those folks is, no, we built our own industry. Mm. We created our own industry. Mm. These people that you see around me, that these, is are, true these too. are real, genuine From the mud. friends. Yeah. We didn't, I didn't know this person was gonna be that person and that person was gonna be this person. We just all had our individual dreams, individual goals, and we all grew. And this goes from everybody behind the camera, in front of the camera, at these labels. Like these are just my natural friends who we all literally came up together. And I always thought that was mm. the coolest shit, Loon, because when I used to when, read Angie Martinez's book, I want everybody to go out there and read Angie Martinez's yeah. book and tell me it don't se it don't seem like um, Greek mythology. Mm. I, think, I think Angie's book is called My Voice, if I'm not my mistaken. My Voice, okay. And the reason I say it, if it reads like Greek mythology is because when you, when you read stories about, you know, her playing this unknown rapper named Jay Z song oh, yes, on the radio for the first yes. time, and then Jay Z pulling up in the bins with some champagne, him and Dame, and Dave, her, him and Angie developing that relationship from there. You know, her and Mary J. Blige riding around the city looking for a check cashing place because Angie just got evicted. You know what I'm saying? Trying to get and, some and, money. And Mary yeah. was on, yeah, and they, would, they needed a place to cash a check because Mary wanted to spot her homegirl some bread, Fire. like. We look at these people now and we, and, and we see them together and be like, oh, that's just some industry shit. No, they came up. They real homies. They came up yeah. to, in the, from the mud together. Yeah. Like, yeah. what are we talking Why about? Why did we ignore that? That's weird. Because we, re we but, stupid. Yeah, but also, is it some of the, the rhetoric working against you now? Right? Like, the of the industry, is that is that without context now working against you down the road? You know what people are saying, damn, he's of the, because maybe you didn't explain that we ain't of the industry, we building our own. Instead of saying, either you of the industry in that yeah, moment, of course a, you couldn't see foresight, but. That's a great question, Loon. Yeah, I never thought about it, because I always thought that, uh, 
I'm only I'm in my head. Yeah. So I'm only hustling for you me. You know I understand what I'm saying. Yeah. I ain't of the industry. Yeah, I I know yeah, what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm like I'm I'm building these different platforms yeah. and I'm making sure my people get in position. Isn't that what you're supposed to do? Right. You know right. what I mean? Because when when my people get in position, they look out for me. You think you, Pete Pete just did a whole season of a TV show, Bupkiss. Mm. I, I'm on there. See, <laughs> you Dope. know what I mean? Like, of course he, of course he gonna call his yeah, man. Yeah, you yeah. know, and it's the same thing with anything else. It's like, yo, if if my man got to play over here, or my homegirl got to play over here, we gonna make sure that we plug each circulate other in. this money, yeah, plug each other man, in. Why, yeah. why wouldn't we do that? And that's what they call it. In. That's how fucked up our culture is. They call in that industry either because of the lack of knowledge or ignoring the obvious. But one or the other. It's causing for the same result, which is how is that industry, yeah, right? Yeah, it's yeah. like it, there's a disconnect with that. With your relationship with Pete, did that contribute to any of that Kanye West shit? Um, what do you mean? Like, what? just it seems like Kanye. I I don't know where it came from, but it seems like he started to throw shots your way, or or like uh, did took a liking a to you. At well, some yeah, point. yeah, I think yeah, I definitely think so because you know Kanye. Called me, the to to get me to, to get me to talk to Pete to tell Pete to leave Kim alone. That that actually how can happened. You do that exactly. That's the conversation. That's what I told him. Like, I got like I, I literally quoted Snoop Dogg to him. Like, bro, we, you need to take this back to the 1900s. Yeah. What Snoop Dogg said. Snoop Dogg said, "Man, don't be mad because you chose me." Like, you yeah. Know what like, I, mean? like I, I literally said that to him. He must have got mad at that. Uh, it's, I'm pretty sure it's a bunch of things on that conversation he got mad at. But once again, <laughs> I'm loyal to the soil. Yeah. When it comes to my friends, For sure. Uh. If you if you loyal to me, I'ma always be loyal to you, right? So I don't care who called me. Exactly. About a P, whoever. Andrew. I don't care what color they are. I don't care. I don't care who called me about Duval. Any of it. Like P, those my friends. For real, when yes. I ride hard for my people, I yes. ride hard. Like yes. I may not agree with everything that they do. You know what I mean? We might have our back and forth issues and you know I, we go at each other but those still my people yes and it's good to hear that bro because when people get in this industry and lose their soul man they ride for the bag the opportunity man. like kanye calling me most niggas would have went and went against their own homeboy and say hey yo man like hey, i didn't yo. even want to give kanye my number and the, and, the, and the label rep that put us on the phone she knows she had to she, she, she had to beg me and call repeatedly. He was he was upset. Why he don't want to give me his number? Yeah. Like why? Who is he? Like, you know, yeah. like that type of shit. I, I've never I've just never been that way long. Yeah, man. man not, but that's real, bro. Like we we people need to highlight that one way or the other. Like it's like yo, man, somebody ride for their people. And when these people with major, this is when you really know about a motherfucker. When these people with major influence call and tell you, hey, go against your man's man. To and what? it's like, nigga, who for what? Yeah, you, like you, you, yo, you, you know that's my friend. What type of? Who do you think I am? And how are you ever gonna respect me if when I, I do did that? that? Why would you ever trust me with you? You just use you, me to crash it out, what? and then you gonna look at me and say, what? "Never get close to do it." What? It don't Come even on, make man. sense. Nah. When nah. um also, and then we'll close out. Also, I want I want to get into Joe Button a little bit. I want to talk about. Um, his shots, but first I want to deal with Breakfast Club because mm -hmm. I've heard him mention that Charlemagne, you've built up this big conglomerate with iHeart, and at one point he tried to act like you're not, you haven't been compensated in a way that you are happy with. Would you disagree with that? A hundred percent. That sounds like the people telling me what goes on in my house with my wife, like. How you? Like, what, he where? said one time you didn't have a million dollars, and I said, "Yo, at this point, it, this isn't even fair to your people that's listening. Like one million dollars, bro. Like seriously. Like, I, and I just seen something that you ain't even count for, and that was more than." You know? No, it wasn't. Cause you stop, no. stop it. No, stop. We not, bro. No, you stop. got. We not stop. finna keep letting these people live with this <laughs> I don't shit, care. bro. I'll be honest with you. I don't care. I know you don't, but it's people behind us that care. I don't listen. They man, need to know that I, what warrants the money, y'all. I want them to know that I am happy doing what I do, and like my mama said, just be happy to be making a living, and more importantly, whatever position you in, be of service. The people. I like this. I like the fact that Loon is up there. Podcast is with the Black Effect. Yeah, we I, going to the next. You level. know what I'm saying? It's one thing to call a man and tell a man or a woman, "Hey, man, I fuck with you. I appreciate what you do." It's another to say, "Hey, I fuck with you, man." 
Let's come turn on, it up. Let, let, come on. And get, he go a check. That's what I'm he saying. He go that, a check. That's all I'm saying. Not, I just fuck that's with you. That's all I'm he saying. He go a bag. That's and I'm finna show you what I'm gonna do. I, that's you know? all I'm saying. And I, that's, that's I, the thing. I could care less what anybody, I mean, and I mean this sincerely, I could care less what anybody thinks about me or what I got. That's not what I do it for. That's not who I am. Whatever narrative people want to spin today, people, for whatever reason, cool. And I and to be honest with you, I appreciate being talked about. Cause I don't talk about them no more. Right. You really don't. I don't have to. This is the first time you probably going they gonna even probably even hear you talk about it, period. I'm not gonna talk about them now. I'm yeah, just that's what I'm saying. Like, you know or even mean? address it in any way, because Yo, you you really stay away I, I, from it. I don't even be seeing this stuff unless somebody yeah. bring it to my yeah, attention. That's though. what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Now, but but let me let me ask you this. What's going on? I go by Big Loom. All of my interviews with your favorite people in the world on Patreon.com and some of their podcasts, as well as the show with only me while I speak directly to the culture. Plenty more perks. I'll see you there. Um, would you say that would you say that there's a competition between you and Joe? Not me. Right. I don't Do you think there's a comparison? I think if I think if people are looking in the podcast space. That's where they fucking up at. Yeah, if you look, if you look, yeah, that's that's. And I'm glad you said that's, that. That's the that's the only place. But then it's then then again, it's like, which what are you looking at? Are you looking at Breakfast Club as a podcast? You're looking at Brilliant Idiots as a Luke, podcast. Yeah. Are you looking at the Black Effect Network as a podcast? I don't know what you you know. Listen, right. But once again, I just appreciate people having me in the conversation. Like I could care less who does what, who's bigger than who, yada, yada, because at the end of the day, we're all running a marathon, and time is going to tell all, and I'm, we all going to look back five years from now, and we all going to have to deal with the choices we made today. Facts. And that's just, Facts. That's, that's just it well, for but, me. So, so when, when, when somebody says, Charlemagne, you don't own this, Charlemagne, you don't own Breakfast Club, um, what, what do you say to that? I would say that, they don't know what they're talking about, you know? Because once again, you don't have to own 100% of something to have ownership. Especially all the major companies <laughs> in the world are owned by several people. Several a lot people. of times, boards of people. Yeah, and, and guess what? Black Effect, I'm 51% owner of that, and we have a board. I'm, I'm, we, I'm, I'm actually about to announce some board members soon. Breakfast Club. Breakfast Club isn't just me. Right. Like, it's and that's me. another thing it's people envy. don't. Yes. It's Angela. Like, oh, it was Angela. Like, right. it's not it's, it's, it's not just me. It's just like, and also, you're looking at a few, I can name a million things that I have ownership in. Right. I got a book imprint with Simon & Schuster. Right. Through Black, it's called Black Privilege Publishing. You know what I mean? It's with Simon & Schuster. We put out Tamika Mallory books, State of Emergency. People How to getting bags with that, that Tamika, too. Tamika's, T told y'all how much bread she got from her first book, Anita Kopak, Shallow Waters. You know what I mean? Um, we got a bunch of other titles that we about to announce soon. I just announced my man Doug Melville with Invisible Generals. You know, but I got a bunch of different titles with some major, major, major figures. Right? It's like I think sometimes people don't even respect that because niggas don't read. Right, right, right. <laughs> like, they don't. Like, they don't understand you, the importance you, if, of it. If, if you respected the value of books and understood you would understand what the value does. of books, you would understand why wow, that's a big deal yes. for a man from South Carolina, a place where slaves used to get imprisoned for, for, for knowing how to read and write. Well, you would get imprisoned for teaching a slave how to read and write. For him to have a book imprint where he's able to have these black people come and tell their, their, their stories, that's a big deal. But you may not understand that if, if your world is I'm only focused on this. Like I got a lot of different lanes. Yeah. Same thing with, like I said, the SPH productions with Kevin Hart and Audible. That's audio scripted content. Oh, different thing. That's it's one of the biggest genres out right now. And of course, the Black Effect. But then you got just businesses that I'm in. Me and my wife just bought six Crystal franchises. See, that's man. what I'm saying. Then these like, guys like, be like, a, I own my podcast. And it's like, well, God bless. Yeah, but hold I on. Own mine what, too. What, what, what else we doing? <laughs> I yeah. own Brilliant Idiots too. That's what I'm saying. But now, yeah, we, we, been, we've been doing Brilliant Idiots for 10 years. I own mine established. too. Established. Along with a, other, a, lot of, a bunch of other things in my right, portfolio. Right, and that's the thing. Now, he, here's what I want to ask. Um, do you think if you guys would have, because I don't know the ownership of, of Breakfast Club, but do you think that if if you guys would have been sticklers about ownership, that Breakfast Club would have still been around? Like, would that have been a deal stopper if y'all would have said, or did y'all not, uh, like, I don't I don't really understand 
Um, because I, I know where they live at with the point, right? The point is with Charlemagne, you built that. And we've been taught to if we build it, we need to own it. Breakfast Club is a nationally syndicated radio program. That you were hired for. But I got I have equity. No, I, I wasn't hired to do a nationally syndicated radio show. Mm, here we go. This I, is the this, business. I, I was hired to This do, is what we looking for. I was for. hired to do a show called The Breakfast Club. That was a local show in New York here City. Here we go. With me, Envy, and Angelie. We built it into a nationally syndicated program. That's when you start having the equity conversations. And by the way, Loon, I, I'm, I'm, let me see. I've been doing Breakfast Club for 13 years. One, two, three. I'm on my fourth contract. You don't think so you that, ever, so you don't so think that, my people updated anything or no amendments happen? How does the black effect happen? <laughs> what do we think? Like, but it's like, important what, to speak like, on me and you. About? Me and you have yeah, the common yeah, yeah, sense absolutely. to navigate this. Absolutely, it's important to clarify these points in detail. Absolutely, yeah. because because you know when it comes to radio, you know there was a point in my life where I thought about wanting to own a bunch of radio stations, like you know, like people like Stevie Wonder, mm. or Kathy Hughes. But then it's 2023. Like my mind has been on podcasts since I became a, a part of Loudspeaker Network. God and bless you, Dad. Combat Jack and Shout Chris out Morrow. Combat. Yeah. When, when I was behind the scenes there. You know, and having equity in loudspeaker, not not just equity, but ownership stake in loudspeaker, which I gave back to Chris once I launched Black Effect. Right. What the hell am I holding on to right, 10% right. of and loudspeaker look how for? That is. Like, look for what? Like, yeah. there's, there's plenty of money to go around. So it's like, I started seeing it back then. I started seeing what Gimlet was doing and Bill Simmons, the ringer, and, you know, all of these networks. I was like looking at all of these networks selling this. You know, Spotify, yes, 100 million, 200, 100 million, yeah, 200 million. Yeah. I'm like, yo, we got all of these podcasts hosted by all of this black talent out here. Whenever I have conversations with a lot of these black talent, they don't necessarily know how to translate that 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 viewership and that listenership into the dollars. dollars. Yes. So it's like, oh, I know what I want my next play to be. Forget owning radio stations. Podcast. Let's do a podcast yes. network. Yes. So that's where this comes into play. Yes. At. So yeah, to your point, when you first start. Uh, Breakfast Club, yeah, I'm a work for hire. It's been 13 years, man. That, and that's so important. Come on, man. man. That's so because <laughs> like, what because are we talking people, about? Be, because see, it the, the, for them to blemish the the image of Charlemagne, it couldn't have just been one thing. It has to be the, all these little tidbits of things they try to amplify, right? Oh, you built that, bro. You don't own it. Well, no, I didn't own it, or I don't own 100 percent of it. It's not just me, right? Now, someone like Joe may own 100% of his podcast, and you had people there to help build it. So that's a weird thing. Let, let, let's talk in rap terms. Do you think 50 Cent gave a fuck that he didn't own Shady Aftermath? Exactly. No, he's going to start G-Unit. Exactly. Pay like, attention to like, this. Like, what are we talking about? Yeah. Like, it's, it's just, it's just a I'm going to be honest with you. It's just a strange conversation because, once again, you know, I don't just own one thing. You know, I have large ownership stakes in some things, small ownership stakes in others, but I have a portfolio. And, and these dudes are talking to me about a podcast. God this bless. is what's strange. No, I'm saying, God bless. God bless. Shout out to everybody hustling and mm. making their money. Mm. But, bro, I'm saying there's, there's kind of a different hustle going on. That No, that's one of my hustles. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's one of my hustles. The podcast, God, I love, I love podcasting. I love the world of podcasting. Like I said, Brandon, we started 10 years ago. I got to salute Chris Moreau always Shout out. because Chris told me two things that changed my life. Chris told me that I need to write a book, which I always wanted to do. And he told me I need to start a podcast. And I was arrogant. I was like, start a podcast. Why? I do morning radio. And he was like, nah, man, I'm telling you, man, podcast is going to be the wave. You need to do it. You know, it gives you a platform outside mm. of Breakfast Club. You know, you done been fired four times, yeah. right? You he know what I mean? talking some sense. Like, oh, you yeah. know what? He might be right. Yeah. Who you want Who you want to do a podcast with? Hmm, let me think. Duval all the way in Atlanta. You know, I need somebody, you know, here in New York. Oh, my guy, Andrew. Andrew funny as shit. He's smart as shit. I, I know Andrew. I, I believe Andrew's going to be a star. Yeah. Let's start this podcast. You together. saw that early. I didn't see it at first. Now it's clear. It's I like, oh, fuck. It. He turned that into something. But at first it. it was like, what is Charlemagne doing? Like, And, and I, I want to talk about that, too, because I, I see, you know, people try to pit me and Andrew together. Right. And I see the play, right? right. Let's call some devices right, right, right. between yes, these folks. Yes, yes. I've never looked at Andrew as being beneath me right. or being smaller than me. Even when you was the guy. You know why? 
We, I just I, I know his talent. Yes, I'm looking at your talent. Yes, okay. I'm I don't care about your status. Yes. Or, you respected his conversation the same it. way you're doing with me. That's it. Yeah, that's why the podcast has always been the brilliant idiots. Mm. It ain't the Charlemagne the God right. podcast. Yes, you know, and I got that name from being. I was I was uh, guest hosting uh, on Bethany Frankel show one time, and I said something, and the crowd started laughing. And Bethany goes, "You come on this show all the time, and you say the smartest, stupidest things." <laughs> she was like, "You're like a brilliant idiot," and I'm like. Hit. Ding, 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 yes. ding. Oh, I know, I know that's the name of the podcast. Yes. But that's why it's always been the brilliant idiots. It's yes. not Charlemagne the God. It's not Andrew Schultz. I see what he, I knew what he was capable of back then. And I'm even watching him now. And I know what he's capable yeah, of. Yeah. In, in the last 13 years, we've have we bumped heads? Absolutely. Yes. You know, he might check me for something. I check him for something. It's two males, two men. That's right. Like we that's two right. men. Like we that's might right. say, no, nah, I don't want to. Nah, that's not like. And we we might have to even get mediators. Somebody might have to come in when business is involved and try to. I help me see what I'm not seeing. He's saying this. I really don't. You know. And so Absolutely. we we have to be able to work through that. I I respect what he's built. Like I said at first, I felt like I I know he gonna be okay because Charlemagne got love for him. So I felt like if nothing else. He going to at least be around Charlotte. But then he started to kind of pull away and pull up. And I said, oh, that's what Char was Charlotte was seeing. You see, the, yeah. you see, you see, like, the brilliant in his YouTube page. We had over a million followers. He turned it to the Andrew Show page. And switched page it to comedy. And started putting his content up to his YouTube content. He like his stand -up killed that. Yeah. Took off. And I, and I know people give Schultz a lot of credit. Schultz, Schultz gives a lot, YouTube a lot of credit. And rightfully so. But what Schultz... Uh, what I'm, what I be trying to get people to understand is, look what Schultz did. Same thing Breakfast Club did. Same thing Looney's doing. We created a space. Schultz was on stage. Yes. He took that content on stage and then used YouTube as a platform yes. to get that content seen. Sh Schultz saves America when he's doing the turn your camera phone Fire. thing. Fire. Created that. Used YouTube to get that content out. But that content can live anywhere. That content ended up on Netflix. Same right. exact show. That's what Breakfast Club was doing. We're doing recording all our interviews Oxy. and putting that shit on YouTube. Then over time, we started recording the whole show. We got every interview. Every interview that we've That's ever done. That's dope. That we Breakfast got the Club doc gonna be Breakfast Club so doc gonna fire. be crazy. And I can't wait to have so I fire. can't wait to do the Breakfast Club doc because that's when all misconceptions get cleared up. Yes. That's when all false narratives I gotta be around for that. Get cleared up. At least some editing or something. I Word gotta up. see that shit. Like we, we literally have every interview that we've ever done. The first interview we ever did was Ray J. Not Ray J calling on the phone screaming about Fab. Ray J we in live? studio. Okay. Like that, not, not that one. Yeah. Our first interview, like our second week on, was Ray J walking in the studio. Wow. That was our first interview ever. That's why I got so much, you know, love for Ray J. Even though I've known Ray J since my days doing radio in Columbia, South yeah. Carolina, but like he's been riding with us since. Since yeah, Ray J, Ray J was down. Ray J, what, with Schultz, though, um, did you feel any flack from the culture, right? That no. You didn't feel nothing. I never, I not, not once did I ever pay that shit no attention. But you heard it. Did you know what was happening? Um, Like, she was next to Schultz. Schultz say some shit yeah, that, probably, before they knew it. Before, now they give him the comment. Ah, he's funny. Yeah, during during the alt-right. When he was built, that. During the alt-right Andy yes. era, yeah. Yes. But, yes. But, but even with that, I was... I wasn't frustrated of his political views. I was frustrated that he was forgetting what he was. You're a comic. Yes. And you're one of the best comics out and, here. Yes. We we all know that. Yes. Because we I go to your stand up right. shows. Every me all of us know what you're great yes. at. Yes. So why don't don't why you want to do this political pundit? Yeah. You know yeah, shit where yeah. people you know think you Ben Shapiro or somebody like right. that. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I like yeah. I was like I didn't I wanted him to get back to being who he is because he can still have. All of those same views and ideologies, you just do it through on stage. On stage, yeah, yeah, that's and that's all, what he's doing. That's all it was with the Trump jokes and the. That's he all still, it is. But it, it's like you know what? I think he kind of fell in love at first with that sparring y'all was doing. Because at first, like when I remember an episode, I don't know what number it was, but y'all was talking about credit. Like, man, you got to give people credit. Like, I, all I care about is my credit. Fuck the money. That episode was classic. And right then, it changed my perspective on a few things, on relationships being worth more than money. Absolutely. And um, just in that mode, I think he he found interest and real value and enjoyment in seeing you every Tuesday, like in coming in there when he was learning. I feel learning that way now. And, Yeah. I still feel that way. That is my escape. Yes. I love going to do Brilliant Idiots. You know what I'm saying? That was People, so fire yesterday. You sat down. You said, all right, Lone, let's go. What we on? What we on? I'm let's like, get let's get it. Yeah, you know what I mean? But that's yeah. what, yo, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, 
I'm like uh, uh, AWACS in Minister Society at this point in my life. Chico Bean said that about me some years ago. Yeah. And and, and I, I, when he said it, I laughed, but yeah. I really feel that way now. Yeah. I want to see y'all shoot, man. man. I done did it all that. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. I, done, I done did that. Like, I like seeing y'all because y'all y'all inspire me. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, I, I want to be sharp. Yes. Like, like, like forget, forget edge, right? Anybody can be edgy. Everybody yes. being fake edgy yes. nowadays. Can you be sharp? Exactly. It's only a way difference. To, only way to be sharp is to have other swords around you. Mm. Sharpen those Steel swords. Star, yes. So whether it's Looney, whether it's Nyla, whether it's Jess Hilarious, yes. whether it's Wheezy and Mandy, all yes. of these different people, whether it's the 85 South Show, yes. any, all of these people that I, I love and I admire their content, yes. I'm happy to be in business with these people. I like watching them in action. Yes. Because that shit is inspiring. I like, remember ooh. us watching Horrible Decisions on the side of the stage at Black Effect, and you was literally like, yo, they smoke. They Smoking. might got the best live show in part. Period. They do. Yeah, yeah. They that's do. What, yeah, we were looking at Jess was like, hey, and that's what I even respect about Jess, is that no matter what, if you are one of us, you a student, even if you a general, even if you a CEO, you still a student in these moments, in these modes. And I heard Jess Hilarious say, Ah, oh, I gotta, I gotta kind of switch up the show a little Let bit. Let me the tell you podcast. something, man. Just hilarious is such a student of the game. People don't even understand how meticulous she is about how she does things, about what she says, because like a lot of us. That, that when I when I look at her, I can see it. Like yes. I'm like, oh, I know what that is. Yes, that's I, that's yes. that's what I I got that. Yes. Like that's that's what I I, yes. I had that. Like that's me right there. Like yes. I can understand her how she makes chaos look easy, but it's organized. Organized, it's organized chaos. confusion. It's yes. organized chaos. Yes. It ain't mess. It ain't mess. Yes, I know she says just with the yes. mess. Yes, trust me, it ain't mess. Yes, and you don't understand that until you see her put together a skit. Mm. You don't see that until you see her on stage. I saw her at the MGM Grand National Harbor in Maryland. 3,000 people effortlessly killing Smoking that shit. It. No bells, no whistles, no DJ, no gimmicks, no stool fucking just straight jokes, 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 jokes. Body in that shit. And what I love about Jess, I've been wa I watched her progression forever because, you know, 2019 I was going to see Jess at Caroline's Comedy Club. I've always gravitated yeah, towards that yeah, energy, yeah, just yeah. watching even her on social media. Right. Like we always was in correspondence. Yeah. That's why during COVID, like Jess, you need to start a podcast. I was on her, I used to be on her head about doing radio right. before that. Yeah. But when COVID hit, like everybody at home, you need to start a podcast. She's like, bro, what's up? Let's Yeah, you know, let's do it. She ain't know I was launching Black Effect. She just like, what you got for me? And it's just like somebody like that, man, I cannot wait to see where she goes. Woo. Yeah, and then you know Ooh. when you when even Ooh. when you see her like I say, damn, like I was telling you the other day, for women in particular is rough in comedy. Then for her to be a black woman, then for her not to have the bells and whistles, like all of these things that people would say will put her at a disadvantage, man. and she's still been able to head to the top of the mountain. Man. That's so dope, man. Man, I think I honestly think, man, I think a lot of the dudes are just starting to catch up with a lot of the talented women in this media space. And I don't yeah. even just mean hip hop media. I'm talking about news media, you know, sports media. Like, you know, there was a there was a moment where I always said the best personalities were Angela Rye, Jamel Hill, and Amanda Seals. And I'm just basing that off the conversations exactly. that I would hear exactly. them have on these platforms. Yes. They'd be smoking, smoking shit, yeah. you know what I mean? And, um, you know, of course you got the 85 South show, you know what I mean? But like you, like you said, you're relatively new, two, right. three years. Like, it's like, it's like women have been killing this Smoking shit in the it. media yes, space yes, for yes, the longest. Yes. Like even when they're you talk great about, too. When you talk about a Just Hilarious, the counterpart to that has always been a DC Young Fly, yes. right? Yes. Because both of them yes. came up through social media. And they media, occupied the same space. Occupied the same yes. space, and they all started doing the same things: television, movies, wilding you know, out podcasts, wilding yeah, out, all yeah, of that type yeah, of shit. Yeah. So it's just like I feel like right now you're starting to see a lot of men catch up to a lot of women. But I think one of the reasons that a lot of the men you know, weren't on par with a lot of the women was because like a lot of the men were mimicking each other. Yes. As like, soon as they find something that's working, do that. Go do that. Everybody do that. That's, that's what's right. working. That's right. Yeah. And go, then, that's right. you know, I find it interesting with the women hip hop is that it seems like that 
due to the competition that has arose in the in female hip hop, they're blessing more youngsters. Example, if you get a hot song and it gets to bubbling, one of those girls are going to jump on it before the other girl jumps on it. Mm. Like, say you a glow ruler and you coming up with the, yeah, one sure. of those girls are going to say, uh-uh, that's me. I'm on that one. But you know Because they know they pulling them. They all pulling them. Salute to Cardi. Mm. Cardi shifted that. Cardi, Cardi she started shifted using that, that influence to. Cardi shifted that in the culture. And I didn't even think about that until you said it just now. But Cardi shifted that in the culture. Because Cardi made it to where, you know, you the OG, you the person that's made all the money, you sold all the records, but you have no problem putting your arm around that next person. So whether And was, in fear of it, I'm seeing other people like, get that for, for, for she get on it. Yeah, and I don't even know if it's fear or... You know what? That's what I should be doing. Right. Well, yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, and sometimes you come, but you come off as a hater. If 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 every time it got to be that one person that that look like they saving the world, right. you right. know. So it's like, nah, I'm gonna jump on this one. I got this one. That's right. You know, for she, and it's like they building this alliances. You know, or something Cardi, happening. Cardi did for female rap what what Jay Z and and Drake did. You know what I mean? Like Jay Z, whoever that, whatever that next thing was out, Jay Z was Wrapped jumping on it. Around. Whether it was Juvenile, huh? Whether it was yes. Houston, yes. whether it was Rick Raw, whoever it was, Jay yes. was jumping on that. Whether Makes it was DMX, so like whatever it was, Jay was on it. You know what I mean? Facts. Jay was jumping 50 Cent, you Facts. know what I mean? Whatever it was, Facts. Jay was jumping on it. And then Drake did the same thing. Drake did it with uh Drake did it with lesser known artists. Yes. So Drake would actually Block Boy JB, stuff like that. What Drake did was make the record big. I think what Ooh. Jay did with those co-signs, he made the artists. Big when Jay jumped on Dope mm, Boys Go that's Crazy a good Remix. Point. When Jay jumped on Dope Boys Go Crazy Remix with Jay with Jeezy, people start looking at Jeezy yes. different. You hear him on Rick Ross Hustling Remix, you start looking yes. at Ross a little bit different. You know what I mean? You that's see him jump on Juvenile point. High, it's like, damn, maybe I got to start taking this down south. Just music. Damn, you know, that's a great point. More serious, but I feel like he made those artists big. I feel like Drake made the man. Song that's a big. fucking great point. I think Cardi's doing both. Mm. I think Cardi's helping to make the artists big, and she's helping to make. The music big, because Cardi just don't do the verse. She do the video. She, she the turn video. up in the video. She, she go live go with Go live you. with him. Yeah. Talk about how, yo, this, this that motherfucker tweet yeah. about him. Like, yeah. that's what you're supposed to do. Man, but I Rick love Ross to see that. Rick Ross said some shit one time, man. I, I, I stick by this. Represent your people's shit like it's your own. Yes. What's going on? I go by Big Loom. All of my interviews with your favorite people in the world on Patreon.com and some their podcast, as well as the show with only me, where I speak directly to the culture. Plenty more perks. I see you there. That's yes. what I'm gonna do. You, like, I'm gonna represent my people. Shit yes. like this. It's my, it's every my time, own. Whether every I, time. Whether I'm in business with them or not. You know, that's what I'm saying? why when you was out there, you like, yo, they got the black effect. You want to send the logo? I'm like, nah, leave that up. Like, that's what this shit is about. Word, word, word. You know what I mean? Ain't Absolutely. no nigga like, bro, when we, we, it ain't always just about loom. If and anything like that is uncomfortable for me, like, cause I'm from the street where it's always about, hey, hey, mama, and them need some money. They, ain't, how you doing? How you feeling, Loon? Are That's you right. okay? That's right. Motherfucker That's ain't right. ask nothing, but can you bail us out every time? Can you bail That's us right. out? So I'm cognizant of like being a person in a relationship that's not just taken. I'm so cognizant of that, man, because I know what it feel like to be took from. You know what I'm saying? That's I don't right. know if it's trauma or what, but I, I try not to be someone that's overbearing and overwhelming with what they really call networking. And that's why I think... I have to be way more talented than these guys because I can't network in the way they network. Man, you're a great networker, Loon. I watch you in these rooms. I watch you have conversations with, with people. I watch you ask questions. Yes. Like, I'm not an expert at anything. Right. I just got some experiences. I got people around me that's way smarter than me that I can lean on to make sure that not only am I getting treated correctly, I can treat everybody around me correctly because I know what I want yes. and I know what I want my people to have. Yes. Now, let's make sure that they got it. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Now, when we put these contracts in front of y'all, it's up to y'all to go get your own lawyer right, to make right, sure right, I right, said, right, right, to make right. sure what I told you is in, there. Is in this yes, motherfucker. Yes, you know what yes, I mean? Yes. But it's like, yo, you're a great conversationalist. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're a great networker. That's all this game is about, asking questions. I'm not boxing nobody out. I'm yes. not building a wall around myself. Yes. And I don't want, you know, to build a wall around anything. I want right. to be able to have access to yes. all of these different people. I'm the person that if I'm on the plane and I'm sitting next to somebody, in my mind I'm thinking, why are we sharing space? So if that person says hi to me or hello, even if they don't know who I am, I'm going to speak. Yes. And we're going to have conversations. Because yes. a lot of the, some of my best 
encounters happen on planes. Me because too. Because I'm sitting on the plane and people are walking on the plane and they showing me love and that person sitting next to me like, who are you? Word up, yeah, 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 You know what yeah. I mean? Like, if, if they don't know, they're like, yeah, who, 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 yeah. what do you do? Yeah. You know how many dope-ass plays I've gotten just by opening my mouth, having conversations with yes. a person, sharing space with me? Like, why well, am yes. I being there mean mugging? Yes. You know what I mean? And plus the way my anxiety works, I got to make sure you're not the shooter. For sure. I got to, let me, let me, for like, sure. when we Check got your on the temperature. plane, that's right. Yes. If I, if I yeah. walk into a, a building and there's just one person there, I speak to everybody in me the room. Too. Me too, me too. Because I want to make sure, I want to see who's who. I'm checking who. temperatures. I need to check temperatures, yes, man. I'm just like that. That's everybody, right. I acknowledge. Hey, how you doing, man? What's how up with you? you? Yeah, you I got to make sure. I'm that's checking right. everything around here because. I trust me, but I'm not sure about the rest of the world. So, that's I, right. and I don't again. I don't know if that's paranoia, but that's how I have to move. That's you know, right. um, do you say? And we'll get out of here in about five minutes. With with, I want to ask you this about about Button though. When Joe Button first uh, started a couple of his shows, he came and got you. The pull up. I'm sorry. The yeah. The pull up. He got casting over you, Wayno, Mayno bunch of stuff like that and then you on his podcast in the beginning for him to take the kind of shots that he took did that disappoint you at all no you didn't it did feel like nothing. not even a little bit yeah i mean uh, no but you tried to help him once you consider that me trying to help him i'm i got my book like you came to the podcast with your book like when this is when you're popping number one bestseller mm-hmm. Like and you sharing space with the guy saying no he his podcast is dope. I mean man. yeah, there's never I'm I'm there's never been a time I've had a platform that he hasn't been on. I mean I can think back. I mean he, the first time I ever met him, I was doing radio in Columbia, South Carolina on Hot 103.9. That's what I'm saying. And somebody called the hotline and was like, hey, he want to come to the show. I'm like, oh word, I ain't, I didn't I didn't know him, but he came to the show. I actually got that recorded too. Like I have that audio. That's um, dope. And then. You know, Breakfast Club. He was on Breakfast Club way back. That's what I'm saying. You know, so, so un- have you un- detached un- yourself? Uncommon Sense way back when I was when I when I executive produced the hottest MC show. Had him on there. Brilliant Idiots had him on there. Like, that's have it. you detached yourself from disappointment? So, as a cancer dude, it's like, do you even see that as amplifying or helping him when when he was in those modes of start? You, you understand your voice look, power? I didn't even look at it like that. So you, but you do understand Breakfast Club has power. You understand your voice has power. You understand when you sit next to me and say Loon's a great podcast to what that does for the market. But but I, I I have no problem sharing space with folks. So it's like if you got an album to promote or you got something you want to talk about and and you want to come on our platform because I've always said Breakfast Club is the people's platform. If you want to come on that platform and discuss it, cool. Uh, you know, even when you know he was on Uncommon Sense, I think he was on there because that was the time. Uh, I want to say him and him and. Drake was getting into it, some mm. shit like that. I, I think that I think that's when he was. I don't know if he was chasing Drake with the rocks. I don't know if that yeah. was around the same time. It yeah. feel like it was, but it's like yo, we, 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 if you can't be used, you're useless. So everybody's using each other in some right? kind of you way. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, it's, a, yeah, it's a transaction. Yeah, like yeah. you using the platform. Yeah, I'm using the con. The story. That yeah. story is the content for the week. Like, yeah, you know, but I, you know, I felt like you you went a little extra. I felt like you was actually saying, and it may be just, this is what I felt. At the time, I felt like he's a good podcast. He's good on the mic. So I said it. It wasn't any, maybe you didn't look at it like, I'm, I'm trying to amplify. I'm trying to help this guy, like, position in the market because that's how I took it from the outside like oh yeah I didn't even think about it like yeah that. I'm like yo yeah. when you pull up the pull up and you pull up to a show and you decide to do the year end thing with him when he's in a position where the podcast is not it wasn't established you were well off established in the market breakfast club was doing crazy numbers your book was number one bestseller several weeks I got two of those that's what I'm saying so it's like for me to sit next to you and say yo this guy's He's coming, man. The podcast dope. You would on air all the time be like, yo, I listen to, the, I like Joe Button podcast. Yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. like, where did it go wrong with you guys? I mean, I don't know. I don't, to be honest with you, I don't, I don't care. It's like, like, it's hey, life. Like, let me see, let me think. When did it? Was it the Spotify negotiation? It was definitely around I that time. I think he crashed no, no, out. It was, it I think he time. crashed a lot of his relationships out based on people saying, yo, you might have handled that wrong. By the way, I love that. I'm going to tell you why I love that. Now you're making me think, and I had to think back on it. The reason I love that is because, yeah, he was going through that, and then him and I had a conversation on the phone after I made my comments on the air, right? Well, I think my comments were something like, you know, I think he understands his value, but he may not know how to properly negotiate it, right? 
And so me and him had a conversation and I was explaining to him why those, the Bill Simmons of the world, you know, they why they got the money why they, they got. Why they warrant that money. You know what I'm saying? It's because they got a network. You know, you can't, Joe Rogan is an anomaly. You can't yeah, even yeah, look at yeah, uh, Joe yeah, Rogan. Yeah, this yeah, man yeah. was getting 100 million yeah. downloads a month. His He's still on, getting an exclusive contract, getting 11 million episodes. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Was, at one point, he was getting 100 million downloads a month in audio. If you know anything about the podcast audio space, you know how ridiculous Smack, that is. Ca that's carrying a whole organization. That's what I'm saying. And then his videos on YouTube, he was getting billions of views. He gave Spotify the exclusive rights to his videos. So that's a, it's just a Too different, much value. different yeah, yeah, ball yeah, game, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's look at the networks. The reason the networks he's getting, getting this money is because they have access actual networks. Bill Simmons had seven to eight successful shows already under, under him. Now, I didn't tell him the play I was about to do. I'm just explaining to him. What warrants the money. What warrants the money. Yes. And you know, uh, I remember he put out a tweet and the tweet was like, um, I, I, he said, Char Charlamagne, I am a network. We'll talk or something like that. Cool. And so he went on his podcast and he put uh, the picture up of, of of me, me me and him. And he said, we are not the same. And I was like, I didn't I didn't even know that had to be said, right? But, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, know, like, yeah. He, he put, we are not the same. And then he went in on me. And I was like, dope. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'll tell you the reason I said dope. Because we were announcing Black Effect that Tuesday. Like- Set me right up. I, I already had my man, Justin Richburg, who did the wall here in the Breakfast Club. He had already did our trailer. He already did our trailer for the uh, for the Black Effect. You loaded, ready to with, go. With all the shows we already had on it, everybody was already signed up. We had to, we already had our partnerships and everything from Drink Champs to All the Smoke, the eighty five South, to Swinging Just Hilarious, to my girls from South Carolina, the We Talk Back podcast, Glasses Malone, like horrible just sit, like we was already ready to go. So I was just like, well, I remember I remember hitting uh hitting Dolly and. Hitting my peoples and I'm like, well, we just got some great promo facts in marketing. And cause you know, we live in this era where people think that's a reaction. Like, so you really think I put together a podcast network in three days? Yeah, that's and, and that's what we were gonna talk about. You can't do that. And then I even seen him try to not and we'll get not say him. I even seen some people mm -hmm. try to say um that it was just a press release. It wasn't a thing. Well, we're looking at it. What is and that? I got I'm I, telling you, I've been paid. Loon, the press, my check is clear. Loon, the press release came out with the logo, like it was already. It's, it's already a, a, a LLC. And since that day, I want to be clear that you've been rolling. And and I also want to be clear to the fans that's watching. Loon, I'm not being biased because I'm in business with Charlemagne. He's my friend. I'm telling you the actual information that I have obtained. But Loon is right there. It's documented. That's what I'm saying. It, like that, if people just go just go back and look, it's documented. Yeah. It's all. It's all it's all right there. You can see it. Yeah. You know? But but I because you know when that Spotify thing happened, I think he went at Van. He said Van called him. I think, and he he was talking about somebody made a Spotify play. Like it was. I just think he he his response to the Spotify thing crashed out a lot of his friendships and his old podcast. It's almost like it damn near. It seems like it it did a lot. You know, and I've always wanted to know, and I know a lot of people want to know your feelings towards some of those things when he takes shots and goes at you and things like that. It don't bother me in no way, shape, or form. Like, I I, I, I really appreciated that first podcast shot because it set up Black Effect. Black Effect. Yeah. And made everything a much larger conversation. And then, you know, the next week was um, him Shooting that he had got now. I got to shoot this down. Now I got to try to shoot. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> this black fiction trying, ain't real. Yeah, yeah, Let me get Nori yeah, on the yeah, phone. Yeah, yeah, all that shit like yeah. that. But then also, what people don't know is um, he, he was texting me that Sunday. Yeah, can we, see? Can, we, can we go to brunch? And I'm like, it's Sunday. It's family day, but we can get on Facetime. And we and we fa I think that's the last time we spoke. We had a Facetime that day. Yeah, and I think that's the last time we. And then he I came back. I think one, that's the last time we spoke. He came back one time. So I text him good morning. He ain't answer, answer my text. I remember he said that. Uh, what? What? Uh, what? You don't went out. This is what I said about the industry shit. It's so yeah. fucked. You're yeah. gonna go do all of that and then text me good morning. Maybe. Uh, I think you know what I remember that Sunday. I remember the good morning. I, I was a good morning text, but it was like, yo, can we go to brunch? And I'm like, yo, I can't do brunch today. It's family day. And then he was like, like, we can get on a FaceTime. And then we had a FaceTime that day. And I'm not even going to say what we spoke about. But 
it wasn't any any of this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. It wasn't any it wasn't any of this. Yeah. He yeah. know he, he know what the conversation was about and I'm yeah. cool with that. Yeah. Cuz at the end of the day, you know, I'm gonna always be here to assist those who 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 may need it. If 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 I feel and it's like another thing. Yeah, it's another thing too that people have to understand. Charlemagne's not obligated to do anything. Loon not obligated. Wallow. At none all. of these. I seen Wallow post something the other day that I think is is paramount. Is monumental. You don't have to answer every call. That's right. You don't have to be available for every text, every meeting, every this, every that. I may need time to myself to focus on me because, like you said earlier, I'm nothing to you if I'm not at my best self. And and yo man, all these people you naming Wallow. Gilly, Van, these my friends. Yes. Like, the people at the top, we not competing. Doing all that, yeah, we yeah. We collaborating. Yeah. When, I see, when, I, when, I, when I was on Million Dollars Worth of Game, and you you probably seen the same thing I seen. When Wallow shows me that, woo, bro, I'm happy for you. Yeah. By the way, by the way, I already knew that. Yeah, because, cause, yeah. because I'm in that I'm in that world, so I'm listening to me when 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 the, the executives and everybody's calling because he that, that's another thing. And I'm I'm gonna get this I'm gonna get this jewel to people. You know, when you're in a certain space, there'll be other people who'll call you in that space and ask you, man, you think such and such is worth this? Yo, can you if if if, if you're if you're really doing good business, yo, yo. Man, how much is this? Can you? How much did you? This person get? How, yeah. how much did you, yeah. you pay that person? Yeah. Right. And I think sometimes that's that's how executives should talk. Yes. You know what I mean? Because yes. because nah, yo, nah, he, they deserve that. Yes. If we had that to get him, they we would give it yes. to him. You know what yes. I mean? Like yes. y'all, if you better lock that down, yes. like that's that's culture right there, yes. right? So when I see Wallow and Gilly getting that, and I say that they're the highest paid black podcasters, it's because they are. Yes. I know what people are getting. Not saying everybody not making. Millions, yeah, but, but yeah. their value, it's the different. bar stool is totally different. For a number of reasons. For a number of yes. reasons that we could get into, yes. right? But they got what they got. And why am I not gonna celebrate that? And I, why I didn't am not... I not gonna salute that? Why would you why would I why would I be angry about that in any way, shape, or And what or form? was the backlash about? Like why were people saying like why were people Joe was mad? Like some shots were taken, but he went to you. And in my opinion, you know, Wallow's my guy, Gilly's my guy, but Gilly the one that said, yo, don't compare us to no nigga that ain't stopping they show reading ads. Again, letting the youngsters know this is the value in the pod. It ain't sitting here with my friends talking. And that's what they've tricked a lot of these guys into thinking. All nah. you got to do, get your mic, <coughs> sit with your mm -mm. friends and talk. It's either about paid subscriptions or ad revenue. Yeah. One so, of the two. So when you said that and, and, and summer culture reacted like, in, in that way, did you what? What did that I didn't even really see it. Oh, you did, yeah. I didn't even really see it. You see my girls, Nyla and Ty. Both Ty been with me for so long, but y'all, I didn't even see it. Like yeah. I, I mean, I, I honestly didn't see it because stuff like that, I don't even. Yeah, I don't yeah. even care about. It. Yeah, because you know I mean? it, it it was just it was just noise again. A lot of no it's I'm glad noise. that you stay away from the noise yeah, like, and stay like, in the like business. Luna put me on or. Somebody will call me and say such. I'll be like, bro, what? I don't care. What's yeah, what's up, man? Yeah. What, what else we got going yeah, on today? Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? We get to the business. Because none of that means nothing. Everybody got content to fill on their podcast. You know, give me mean? your top five pods in the space. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> no, that's the, that's a tough question because you know, when we say in the space, immediately you think black, right? But are we talking hip hop? Are we talking? Black, we can go both, cause it's so. Oh, yeah, let's go, man. Let's, let's go. God both. damn, the pivot, and they not even on Black Effect. Yeah, pivot's dope. I am athlete with Brandon Marshall. They not even on Black Effect. He's dope. That's my brother. Eighty five South Show. My people. Um, a million dollars worth of game. Wallow and Gilly. Hey, hard is too. That's that's a lot, boy. Uh man, who would I put five? Who would I put five? I mean, I I think I would have to go. I I like Just Hilarious a lot. You know what I mean? I love so horrible Jeff. decisions too, though. Yeah. But I like Just Hilarious a lot because you get to see a, a side of. Well, I can't I can't say a different side of Just because she's been doing it long enough that you know. You should know that side you, of you, it. Yeah. exactly. But you know, she's not just being a comic on that. She's giving real life advice. But then I love it's up there. We talk. Okay, I'm gonna do hip hop. If I do hip hop media, I'm gonna say um, it's up there podcast. 
Damn, I didn't even say all the smoke. See what I'm saying? I think, yeah, nah, you didn't. That's what I'm saying. Like, pivot. all the smoke is yeah. fantastic. Like, yeah, I don't know. so you got to go all the smoke. Ah, no, all the smoke ain't hip hop, though. That's I, Right? But that, that's in the pivot. The one with the that's pivot. That's what I'm saying. I'm athlete. God, yeah, damn. Yeah. But athletes are having some of the. I'll yeah, say they, this, they, they Athletes are having some of the they best podcasts. Like, from, from the Matt Barnes and Stephen Jackson, yes. and the Brandon Marshalls, Pac Man, and yes. Brian and Fred and Channing. Yes. Um, hip hop media space, I'm going to say the best podcasts are Drink Champs. It's up there podcast. Um, damn, I'm trying to think of people that I know are are audio. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to stay away from the, yeah, yeah, the people yeah. that to do more, the more yeah. video than anything. Yeah, I that's 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 what I got. Yeah, honestly, drink champs and it's up there podcast. Who I'm missing? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't I like. I mean, unless you count, I said million dollars worth of game already. I guess. We, yeah, you put I guess you would count them yeah, as hip hop. You put million but I, dollars but worth of game. The thing about million dollars worth of game that's so ill is the same thing with all of us. Yeah, we are hip hop, but we're not. We moving outside of yeah, that. We, we, yeah, we, 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 we men. Yeah. We talk about real issues. Yes. Like, man, you can go watch Wallow tell, try to save all these young brothers' lives. Man, you so know what dope. I'm saying? Yeah. Like, think, think about the stuff he told Thug, stuff he told Pooh stuff he told King Von. To me, that's bigger than. Yes. Hip hop. That's yes. a real OG. That's yes. not, I that's ain't game. Hating, that's game. Yes. I ain't hating on yes. you. Yes. And, and, and they showing that, yo, there's no age limit yes. to this. Yes. You know what I'm saying? No. They're, they're showing you that, that, that there's no age. Yeah, because they ain't just spring chickens. Yeah. No, and they, and they, they Wallow not, did 20 years. They not trying to act young. Nah, they saying Neff. They tell putting that's you up right. on game. That's they right. ain't trying to run from that. That's you know right. what I'm saying? So I respect Wallow and Gilly a lot. I think, like you said, they warrant, they warrant a lot of the market share and they, they doing a great job. Bootleg Kev. Kev is cool. Bootleg Kev. I like Kev. I got Kev in my top I like five hip hop. Uh, Podcast, got us, got us, got us. Salute, Boulay Cat. I got. Do I, you do you check out any? I, this last question. What do you think about? Um, because I seen the reemerging of an old clip with you and Schultz about Rogan and Breakfast Club. Mm -hmm. At that time, it was a different conversation. Uh, the market was a little different. Um, what what's your updated perspective on that? It's the same. And <laughs> what I meant by that when I said it was Joe Rogan. Salute to Rogan. I love Rogan. He's a podcast, a massive, massive podcast. You know, um, he's a pod. I don't know. I don't think he was behind the paywall at that point. I mm -hmm. think he was still. No, he was wide on YouTube. Yeah. And at the time, if you look at our YouTube numbers, we both, we all, the Breakfast Club and Joe Rogan both had A plus YouTube scores. Yeah, I pulled him. I remember that. Yeah, I think he had. Uh, and I'm probably fucking this up right now. He had more. He had more subscribers, but we had more views, I believe. I think I'm I saying remember that it was right. either one or the other. Yeah. It was flipped I, I, one of the one I, one of those. I ways. think he had more subscribers, but we had more views. But also, to go back to what I said at the beginning of the podcast, Breakfast Club is a daily morning radio show with eight it gets million confused cause monthly it monthly listeners. It occupies that YouTube space. Yes. It is confusing. And, 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 and we're a podcast that that comes out in fifteen to twenty million downloads a month. And we're on social media and we're on YouTube. You know, Rogan's reach is crazy. Yes. I'm just saying from a, a strictly numbers game. Right. Just, just pay attention. Yeah, just availability. That, I'm everywhere. That's it. That's yeah. it. But but like, and listen, whenever Rogan gets mentioned in something, Charlamagne gets mentioned yeah, in something. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, like me and, and the, the times me and Rogan have had conversations about content and stuff like that, it's a it's a it's a very mutual respect. Right. Joe, uh, he not nah, he not nah, he yeah, Rogan well, Rogan knows the business. He respects I know he respects, you know, what you've done. And I didn't you know I didn't even mean that in a disrespectful way. I'm just trying to tell people that, you know, there's so many different avenues and so many different lanes that Breakfast Club occupies. Occupies. Yes, you know yes, what I'm saying? Yes. And 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 Rogan's space is massive. Still is still is still is massive, but you know, that's just how I felt. At on, the time. on the podcast, he got he kind of got that on lock. It's it's also interesting to see Schultz kind of go in in that world and in that world, right? In that world with Rogan, in that world with Charlemagne, and neither one of y'all are affected by his, you know, um, his participation on both man, sides. It's a lot of ego in this game, though, man, bro. Schultz has Schultz has masterfully, you know, maneuvered, created his his situation. Yes. he's done exactly what you're supposed to yes. do. I love that. I love Schultz. Love what Deezus and Meryl did when they was together. You know what I mean? Like I love seeing people, you know, that I fucked with early on running it up. Become these things. Like, you know, I love 
back in the day when we was on Uncommon Sense and we used to have Carlos and Chico and DC on there, man, it don't nothing bring See me greater pleasure out. than seeing yeah. 85 South Show booming yes. out this motherfucker. Man, my, they, girl, my girl Zuri Hall. Zuri was my original co-host on Uncommon Sense. She E! News now and all that. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I I'm saying. I love seeing that yeah, shit. Yeah, like, that's, that's my some shit. dope shit. That's some super, super dope shit. had a podcast on Black Effect too called uh, Hot Happy Mess, but that's my, that's my girl. That's, that's family. Like, I... I, I Sincerely cherish my relationship. Man, that's so dope. And and I, I keep my face car clean, you know, for that reason. You know what I mean? I want to be able, when I launch something, to be able to pick up the phone and say, Need this. I got to play yeah, for you. Yeah, and yeah. And they want to fuck with me. You know what I mean? Like, it's not. Because I tell you, Wallow, because I Wallow is somebody I went to, because, you know, I got, I had a lot of deals on the table from different places. One of them was seven figures, but it was it was it was more of an ownership type of play, and and and, and I, I hit Wallow and I went and spent some time with him. Just like man, I'm kind of confused. I don't know what to do. He's like, bro, Charlemagne won't miss. Like if Charlemagne say something, he will not miss. Look at Dolly. This is Dolly calling. Is Dolly What's calling? What's up, Dolly? Right here with Charlotte. Hold on, put you on speaker. Dolly, 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 my baby. Don't talk no business. We recording. Yeah, we recording. He'll, he'll call you right back. We okay, about to, we about I, to yeah, finish. We finna wrap up in five minutes. All right, all right. That is Dolly, the president of the Black Effect yeah. Podcast Network. Hitting, my, hitting, hitting me up about that business. My longtime friend who I used to sit in the MTV building with and watch her in the edit room editing Wild and Out episodes when she was a producer on Wild and Out. And... Like that's that's a that's my I, that's my sister. Yes. Like that's somebody like you I, roll with her like a mother. That's, that's she in the everywhere. car with your family. That's we're real talk. Yeah, that's like what my I'm mama loves Dolly. Even if it's five cars trailing now, Dolly, Dolly you in this car. That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. my mama loves Dolly. Yes. Like that's like that's family, family yes. in a real way. Yes, and that's what it's about, right? And seeing somebody and saying that's a boss. Yes, like that's. She's a total boss. Now, Nick, Nick had her bossed up too. You know what I'm saying? She was Nick Cannon's assistant and then she became wow. a producer on Wild Out. That. But it's like, yo, I'm about to start this situation yes. that I know is going to be a $100 million play yes. one day. That's who I need yes. running this network. That's so dope. Black Effect would not have the success that we're having if it wasn't for Dolly. And you see that? That's She's calling me. Like, she's trying to that's get right. something straight. She can easily have somebody to reach out to me. That's right. Right? She, like, that's why I, mean. I need people to understand behind the scenes, it's really working that's over right. at Black Effect. This is live. This isn't planned. That's right. Like, that's the president calling. When, when I did my first uh, cover for Black Effect, I think it was about two years, and uh, Black Enterprise, which I loved because it's Black Enterprise. Black Enterprise wanted to put us on their digital cover. And I'm like, hell yeah, what I wanted to put me. And I'm like, well, it got got to be me and Dolly. Man. Ain't no other way. Man. I'm not doing it. That's so dope. If it ain't me and Dolly. That's so dope. She the one that make this shit go. Plus that just it looks powerful. Yes. This is a it's a black woman yes. running the Black Effect yes. podcast network. Yes. You know what I mean? Cuz she's always been great with talent cuz of what she does on on, on Wild and Out and you know the the shows that she's executive produced, being assistance to Nick Cannon, you know what I mean, and other people. It's like yeah, yes. this is what we gonna do because this is what we showing y'all for the next twenty years. Yes, this is what it's gonna be. Yes, I, yes. I, love, I love, I love seeing Desiree Perez. Yes, president of Rock Nation. Like that that's long. what you do. That's yeah. what you. That's what you're supposed to yeah. do. Put them in position when you get in these positions. You put your people in yes. position because your people are gonna be the one. If, the, if you already got people that are keeping your life together, right? The people that you lean on, they the pillars in your life. If they already doing that on a personal level. Why wouldn't you, you know do that on a business level? On a big, man, if that capable. makes so much sense. If, if they're capable. But you, you can give them the tools, though. That's right. Right? You can also put them in position to be the overseer over a lot of these people that have the tools. That's right. Because I know my best interest lives with you. That's right. Right? That's so right. if you watch the people that's watching the food and just make sure you don't smell it burning. You might not know how to cook it, but make sure you don't You're smell right. it burning. You're right. And if you smell it burning, let me know. And like, yeah, Dolly's dope, man. I, I want to thank you, bro, man, for coming you, on bro. the show, man. Great conversation, like I man, say, you, you man. Got I got me think... in here talking about shit I ain't. I, I normally don't talk about, and yeah. I've never, I never spoken about. But that's why I fuck with your conversations. Like that's literally it. why I listen to the It's Up There podcast. I appreciate you, know what I mean? you bro. And, and that's gonna take you a long way because there's gonna be people who hear you and hear your conversations and they're going to say, oh, I want to go sit with him because yeah. he's well-informed. Yeah. He does his research. He finds out things that, you know, other people may not know. 
and you know we can really get to it. Yes, so man, yes. thank you, thank you for Beautiful having me. Thing, man. And make sure y'all subscribe to the It's Up There podcast on the Black Effect iHeartRadio podcast network. Hundred percent, man. We got a long way to go, man. I appreciate you, brother. Yes, sir. Thank you, man. Love, brother.